What's up guys, Simon here. Recently, I had to take a business trip to see one of my distributors in the Los Angeles area. Some of you may know I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I had to get on a flight, go to the airport, deal with Uber, and I wanna share that experience because it is not something I imagined would ever happen. So I flew into Burbank, California, which is my favorite airport if you are in the Los Angeles area. It's just a lot easier to get in there and get out of there. So before taking this flight, I was worried. I was worried about the travel restrictions that the state of California had. Now, this was about two weeks ago. I didn't know what I should bring with me in regards to travel. I did get an email from the airline. The most important thing was you needed to come to the airport with a mask. You needed to cover your mouth. That was a requirement. They said, if you don't want to wear a mask, you don't have to travel. So with the travel restrictions, I was thinking, hey, uh, the prices are going to be super cheap. I'm going to be able to get in and get out and not pay so much money because I don't know of anyone that's flying. However, that was not the case. I actually paid double for my airline ticket and I couldn't understand why until I got on the airplane. On the way there, I was having a hard time finding a ticket. And on the way back, I was having a hard time finding a ticket that fit my schedule because less flights are happening. So for now, hit that like button and subscribe. Let's go into this video and I'll share some of my travel experience. This time I decided to drive because I didn't want to take an Uber. I actually didn't know Uber was still operating, but they are. I had to drop off one of my cars at BMW, which the lease ended. So I left my car at the airport. On the way back, I took an Uber home after I dropped off the car. So I booked United one way. And typically when I book United, I use my American Express Centurion card to stay at the San Francisco Centurion Lounge. I was not able to do so this time because they are closed for the coronavirus pandemic. But getting to the airport, I quickly noticed that there were not many people there. So this is what it's like traveling in the airport with coronavirus empty there's nobody here and then that's the line social distancing in effect I also noticed someone sitting by the door handing out masks as well as sanitizer there was only one line of open to get into security checkpoint. I am a TSA member or global entry member. I have clear, which is a, a benefit of being an American Express Centurion member. And neither of those two lines were actually open. Uh, there was just one line and I would say there were about five or six people ahead of me. It felt almost zombie-like or apocalypse-like. I've never seen an airport so empty prime time at 11 o'clock. At the checkpoints, they had social distancing lines. So it was measured out to be every six feet from each individual standing to enter the check of your ticket and your ID. The TSA agent that was checking the tickets was behind a plexiglass. And so you could not breathe. And there's a little window where you could hand them your ticket. The same with the ticket checkers. They had plexiglass around to check you in. So it looks like this is going to be a common thing. Thing. People are going to stand behind the plexiglass, check you in and out so that germs do not pass. While walking through the airport, I noticed a lot of people wearing masks. Also not wearing their mask, but having it on their face, but maybe they would have it on their forehead or down below their neck. A lot of people actually had their masks uncovered at the airport as well. On a Thursday at 10 a.m., at the airport. There's nobody here. This is SFO, United Terminal. 
there was nobody around. I couldn't see an individual in front of me. I could not see an individual behind me, maybe one or two. It was just weird. I was walking through these hallways to get to specific terminals. I just did not see anyone. So I felt alone at an airport. It was almost like a video game. Before taking the flight, I was a bit concerned that this would be a situation where I do need to give a valid reason for my travel there and back no one has raised that question while waiting at the terminal and sitting down because all the lounges are closed a lot of the restaurants are closed I, in fact they had like two or three restaurants open there were limited choices in comparison to an average day all the shops were closed so the only thing they had open was similar to what a convenience store is so you could get water gum and something to read or snack on while waiting at the terminal and sitting there i noticed a professional photographer taking pictures as they would check into this united flight I found that to be awfully weird. I have no idea why he was there. Maybe they're encouraging travel or maybe they are publicizing. I don't usually trust the news so much. So it was odd to me that someone was taking professional photos of random people boarding airplanes. So as I got onto the airplane, I figured out why my ticket costs so much money. It is because they are social distancing each seat. No one sat next to me in either the middle seat or the aisle. I had the whole row to myself. No one was in front of me. No one was behind me. And then a couple rows after there were other individuals. It was the creepiest, weirdest thing. I've actually did not have a single person sitting behind me. Only a few people in front. I'm talking five people to fly all the way to Los Angeles. So the profit in that with the airline must be zero or negative. And that's why the ticket price is or higher. They're charging each individual more money to fly. They're usually canceling specific flights where they're not full or they can't even sell a certain amount of tickets. One of my businesses is in the airline travel and that industry took a big hit. So I was really curious to see how traveling really is during the pandemic time. The flight itself was pretty quick because it's an hour or so flight. I enjoyed the flight. I just did my master class or something that I listened to to keep myself entertained. Once we landed, we deplaned and the same situation in Burbank. Although Burbank is a much smaller airport, there were still, and I mean a lot smaller, there were still a lot less people than I normally see, but definitely felt more alive than San Francisco, which is a very large airport. So, you know, it's a square footage thing. You take five people and you put them in one room, it looks busy. You take five people and you put them in a big house, it's not so busy. But I would say it was about 98% less busy than I normally see. Once the weird travel experience was over it was time to have fun i got picked up at the airport by my friend with his lamborghini huracan with the coolest license plate motivate i asked my friend if he could drive me to a barber shop that he knew was open and we ended up going there in fact we actually had to sneak in the back because the front door was locked and their window display was covered up while across the street people were buying marijuana freely found it odd that a barber shop has to remain closed but you could buy weed we then stopped by r1 motorsports which is one of my clients and we got to see some of the most exotic cars and the coolest artwork I've ever seen at a shop, which included a bunch of Marvel characters. I really admired this artwork, and it's something we're going to do when we build out our studio in our new place. Overall, the trip went well, and I got to end it on a high note, driving this beautiful Lamborghini through a tunnel. I gotta give this guy some space. I gotta give this guy some space. <laughs> Driving that thing was an exhilarating experience. As you could see in the video, the smile on my face was something that a kid feels when he gets a new toy. Going through the tunnel was wild. This car gets a lot of attention and it was just a pleasure to drive. And the best part is we got to have a beer in Santa Monica Beach and enjoy this beautiful ocean view with not so many people around.
So guys, comment. Uh, have any of you guys flown or traveled recently? If so, share your stories. Let me know what you think about this travel experience. Let me know when you are planning to travel again. My family and I had a vacation booked for Hawaii in July that we recently canceled because we don't know the status of everything that's going on. The last thing we want to do is get to Hawaii and be quarantined and then be hit with our hotel bill and everything else in between. So when do you guys think travel will, will resume or when will this coronavirus go away? Comment below. Please like my video, check my other videos and subscribe to my channel. I will continue putting out this type of content and thank you so much for your precious time and watching my videos.